Filipinas. <laughs> Hi, Carl, please keep your mic on mute. If anyone has questions, please ask them in the chat. Welcome, Deb. We're asking for everyone joining us to please keep their mics on mute. Hi, it's good to see you. I love Deb's like bopping around. I should have like waiting music for us. I'll have to do that next time. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, a song of the day. <laughs> have something fun, upbeat. What else did you buy on your shopping trip to get these ingredients? Did you buy anything good? Oh, for today? Well, like I said, it's going to be um, the seared sea scallops. Really simple. Just wanted to really present how to cook them properly. Um, and then serve them with a quick side. So it's, um, we've got uh, steamed asparagus and couscous with like a lemon vinaigrette. So yeah, it's just something different. You know, I'm tired yeah. of chicken and beef and pasta and everything. I mean, even though couscous technically is like pasta, but it's a quick cook. And um, yeah, just a little bit refreshing cool. for the spring. Yeah, nice little well, lunch. Welcome, Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> Eating lunch. Please do. Nice. Morning grilled so, chicken. Yep. So we're going to ask everyone who's coming in, please keep your mics on mute. Questions will be available for you to ask through the chat. Hi, Vicki. Glad that you're joining us today. Definitely. I love this. I get to see people's faces. <laughs> it's nice that it's so sunny today. I mean, I know. Rough, you know, trying to not have the glare come through the windows, but um, after yesterday, whew, and all the rain, this is a yeah. nice, nice. Open up the windows, get the fresh well, air. I fortunately have a very like large ring light and everything, so that I can look a little yeah. bit well lit. Very good. <laughs> and I need to find a good place. Uh, for when classes start online. Yeah, decide where your, your home base is gonna be and everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a challenge. It's like where to set up and where best to be situated to do your classes and stuff. So I have actually two different spaces that I do any of my Zoom stuff in. I have a kitchen table, which gets the light later in the day. And then I'm in what I call the conference room is my my front porch area right now so very good yeah okay all right we're gonna we'll give it a couple more minutes before um we get started okay because it's still not even noon yet so thank you guys for joining early we really appreciate that for sure Yeah, I can't wait for all this to be over. I mean, even though, you know, I'm a chef and I cook and all of you guys are foodies, I'm just running out of like good options. You know, cooking for myself, cooking for my mom. I don't know. So that's why I thought scallops would be a nice change of pace. But yeah, what have you been making, Christine? Um, I've been making, um, hold on, I'm trying to bring people in right now. Um, I have been cooking, um, my husband has been cooking when he comes home from work. He is still actually out and working um, because he works for grocery and he's a chef. So unfortunately he does cook sometimes, but I've been trying to cook um, as much as I can to give him a little bit of relief and he's not having to do that after working. Um, so right. there's, you know, a lot of times I cook with a lot of um, ground turkey and ground beef, but I don't have okay. access to that currently. So, been doing a lot of i've been making like little charcuterie platters and stuff just to make things easy oh, for myself um did something like that the other night just some cheese, cheeses and meats and breads pretty simple um trying to have um 
some fresh vegetables all the time. I mean, I've got a six year old, so trying to make sure she's eating things healthy and not just eating a bunch of um, frozen things all the time. You know, she, thank goodness, really loves her hummus and cucumbers and carrots and things like that. So trying to get good. vegetables and as many meals as possible. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff I've been doing has been kind of quick stuff because my time has been limited too, so. Oh, I muted myself. Um, thank goodness for my rice cooker. Um, and then, yeah, and then I, my slow cooker is probably going to get busted out this week too and I'm gonna throw something in there. So, yep. yeah, there's nothing, nothing I know, wrong with simple time. cooking. Yeah. Oh, definitely not. It can certainly still be tasty just because it's simple, you know, it doesn't mean that it's not flavorful or fun. Absolutely. Stuff like this. Absolutely. Very simple, but good. So um, welcome everyone. Uh, it's just a little bit after noon right now. So I think we'll probably get started. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Christine Duke. I am the Continuing Education Program Manager at Kendall College at National Lewis University. So I am in charge of all of the recreational classes that Kendall offers to the public. We are very excited to have our first ever Taste Talks Q&A session today. Um, we're hoping to do a few more of these in the future, so stay tuned to see what might be coming from us. But we are very excited to have one of our faculty members um, joining us today. Chef Colleen Karstead is actually going to be demoing a dish that she is going to prepare, but also she is available to answer any questions you have about cooking in your kitchen. I know so many of us who are not culinarily trained um, have really been thrust into our kitchens lately and have to make the best of it. And um, it might not be in our comfort zone. It might be um, something that we still need to learn some things about or are wondering what would be best ways to do something. So Colleen is gonna answer our questions as best as possible for us today. Please send me questions in the chat. I will be relating them to her. And even if we don't go get to your question in this session, um, we're gonna work on helping to get all those questions answered for everyone. So Chef Colleen, would you like to take it away? Sure, thank you very much, Christine. And thank you everybody for joining us today. It's a nice little break from, from maybe work or watching the, the television or Netflix. I mean, I feel like I've watched everything there is out there. Um, so I was happy to do this for you guys today. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I decided to demo uh, seared, sea, uh, seared sea scallops with a, a couscous with steamed asparagus and a lemon vinaigrette. It's just something a little bit different and light um, and quick. Um, as I said earlier, it doesn't, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's not tasty. Uh, but with their simple dishes, you wanna make sure that you execute all of the cooking techniques properly so you get the most out of your products. So. But that being said, I got some really nice, these are dry packed sea scallops. You'll notice that they're the sea scallops or they're the larger ones. Um, if you can't find the dry pack, meaning they're not uh, stored in water or they're not frozen, um, they're actually, uh, and they come in a nice big can, but they're dry. Uh, if you ever see your scallops in water, I try to stay away from those because they're just waterlogged. You're losing all the flavor. So I went to the store, found the dry pack, and you can ask them at the fish counter if they're dry packed, and they should say yes, and those are the ones you want. If the sea scallops are not available, you can switch this out for bay scallops. You could do this with shrimp. You could do this with a piece of salmon or um, Chilean sea bass. You can swap it out. The technique's gonna be the same. Uh, so again, I love scallops, so I've got my scallops. You notice that I've got it on a paper towel. To really sear your scallops, you want them as dry as possible. So about a half an hour ago, I took them out of the fridge and popped them on the paper towel. I've seasoned with a little bit of salt and pepper and I'm removing all that excess moisture. If there's too much moisture on your scallops and you pop them into the pan, that moisture is gonna come out and instead of searing and really developing that caramelization that we all love, you know, like when you go to the restaurants and you order scallops and they come out and it's all brown on top, you figure, how do they do that? Well, they use a really, like I said, dry scallop and no moisture in the pan. So, uh, sorry to interrupt. Said, I, I have uh, a first. My saute. 
Jeff, I have our first question. John wanted to know where did you get the scallops? So the scallops, um, I really like buying my scallops at Mariano's or at Whole Foods because they do such a volume, their inventory is constantly turning over so that seafood is always going to be fresh. Does that make sense? That nothing's ever sitting for more than a day or two um, in, their, in their cases. So yeah, I went to Mariano's, they had them. Um, again, these are about $21 a pound, right? So if you wanted to go with the base scallops, it's half the price and the same, the same flavor. Okay? So I've got my pan little bit of olive oil, hot pan, hot oil. Uh, you'll know that your pan is ready when you take your scallop, if you push it down and you start to hear the sizzle, okay? It's talking to me, it's saying, hey, I'm ready, right? Hot pan, hot oil. These are gonna go down. I'm not overcrowding my pan. Like they're not touching each other. See what I mean? They're nice and kind of on their own. Thank you, go ahead. All right, the key here is to really just let the scallops cook. Um, I know that you get your tongs in your hand, you might have a spatula, you wanna get in there and start smashing them down and moving them around. Don't, just let them, let them, let them caramelize, develop that color, right? Um, I know you might get a little nervous about, well, how do I know when it's time to flip? Well, you know it's time to flip when I'm looking at my scallops, right? And all that heat is coming from the flame underneath the pan. As that heat is working its way up through the scallops, it's gonna start pushing moisture up to the top. As soon as I start to see that beads of moisture on the top of the scallop, that's your cue to flip, right? Because we're only gonna flip these once. It's another common mistake. A lot of times people wanna constantly be flipping and flipping and flipping, but then you're not allowing the scallop to really caramelize, right? So Again, these were matte and dry when they went down. Yes. So would you also recommend that for other um, food items like your burgers per se? Absolutely. Um, I use it for burgers, steaks, fish, salmon, right? Because again, I had it on the paper towel, so it's nice and dry. So when it goes down, and again, that heat comes up through the scallop and all that moisture comes up to the top because there's nowhere else to go, that's your cue. Again, it's a great tip. Um, to help you have really perfect burgers and fish every time, right? So is it making you nervous that I'm not even like paying attention to these? Are you just sizzling away? Are you, are you listening to them? Is that what your cue is? Yeah, definitely, see? Your cue hold oh, it so Perfect, we can see that a little better now. Thank you. Okay. I am using a nonstick pan, so it's not really necessary. As I mentioned earlier, as long as you have a hot pan with hot oil, you kind of created a nonstick surface. But if you're nervous and you, know, you just happen to have a nonstick pan, this is a, a 10 inch nonstick pan, go ahead and use it. Um, but don't be afraid, high heat, hot oil, every time. Chef, yeah. I, I have another question for you. All right. So some recipes yeah, you call, call for sugar or flour to be dusted on the scallops to promote browning and caramelization. Would you recommend that technique? So yeah, um, I like to put a little bit of flour on the scallops if I'm going to deglaze the pan with wine and make a pan sauce. That flour is gonna help to thicken the pan sauce. Today, I'm serving with a lemon vinaigrette. I don't need the, um, the flour. Also, yes, a lot of times people dust with a little bit of flour to promote the browning. However, I know that my pan is hot, right? And I know that um, I've got my hot oil and I'm not touching them and I'm gonna develop that caramelization with or without that flour. So you need so to bring the heat. <laughs> All right, so I can see that um, on my scallops, I know it's kind of hard to see in this, but they're getting nice and kind of sweated on top. But now it's time to flip. Look at that, look at that color. That's what you're going for, okay? That is really good. Look at that. That's what you pay the big bucks for in the restaurant. <laughs> you do it right here in my little Ravenswood apartment. Perfect. Okay. Oh yeah. So I have, my, I have another question for you. What kind of oil are you using? So I am using a very fine Bertoli extra virgin olive oil. Now I know a lot of times people say, oh, you can't cook with the olive oil, you're gonna burn it up. But I find like a brand like this is kind of cut with a little bit of like vegetable oil or corn oil to blend. 
so it can take on the higher heat that I'm using here without burning it. If it was a really nice olive oil from Italy or from Spain, I wouldn't saute with it. I wouldn't make my vinaigrette with it and uh, use it as a finishing oil. But so save you your you want to use save what? the EVOO for things like that. Yeah, exactly for the finishing. However, um, I do suggest using an oil, not butter. If you try to use whole butter um, in this dish, you'll burn the butter and you'll get that burnt butter taste on the scallops. We don't want to do that. So a nice blended olive oil, vegetable oil, something like that, you're good to go. Okay, so these are flipped. Like I said, it's only gonna take another minute or so for them to finish cooking. Um, so while that's finishing, I'm gonna plate up my couscous. I love couscous. Um, it's nice and easy to prepare, less than five minutes, right? You can buy the boxes um at the grocery store or you can buy it in bulk right but um couscous is not a grain a lot of times people think it is but it's not oh no it's not okay it's basically just little bu bubbles of uh pasta right it cooks up in five minutes so it's just a plain couscous a little bit of salt pepper um i had a shallot that i that i started with just to give it a little bit of aromatic um you can certainly add some thyme Anything else you'd like. I'm gonna do a nice pile right down on my plate. Got my assistant here, Mallory. Thanks, Mallory. <laughs> 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 okay, so I can hear that my scallops are sizzling. They're done. I got beautiful color look on the bottom now, on both sides. Can you hold it up a little more? Yeah, ooh, ooh. that's the shot okay. we were looking for. I'm gonna shut the heat off. I don't wanna overcook these. If I overcook them, they're gonna turn into like tennis balls, right? We can like bounce them around. We don't wanna do that. So with that, I've got my steamed asparagus, my restaurant quality scallops with my horrible Chicago accent. <laughs> my uh, cousins live out in Cape Cod and um, every year my mother and I go out and visit. And every time I order my scallops, my aunt always uh, correct me. They're like, Colleen, it's scallops. I'm like, oh, oh my God, no. Here in Chicago, this is what we say. It's the whole Midwest East Coast speech today. All right, so I've got my couscous in that. I've got my um, asparagus down, lemon vinaigrette. It's one part lemon juice, three parts olive oil, salt, pepper, a little bit of shallot. That's it? Without, that's it? Yeah, that's it. I can totally do that. Look at this, all over. Gonna garnish with a little bit of lemon. A little bit of parsley for fun and color. And that, my friends, is your dish. Right there. Look, I mean, I made it in less wow. than that's about 10 minutes, not even. Okay. That was, yep. Oh, you're getting applause all around here. So. Woo -hoo! See, this is what you learn at Kendall. <laughs> this, is my tuition, this is my tuition money. Yeah. <laughs> Education, culinary. That looks absolutely delicious. I wish my lunch had really looked that good. Um, but yeah. definitely, uh, I know we wanted to open up a floor for any kind, of, any kind of culinary cooking questions or anything like that. Um, I did have one question that came in off of my social media channels. Someone wanted me to ask um, a chef specifically, uh, what do you use to sanitize your kitchen? Okay, so the same principles that we use in school or in any restaurant, any kind of food outlet, um, you're gonna wanna use something that's going to kill the bacteria and viruses. Um, here in my home, I like the Windex multi-surface. <laughs> it really works. Um, just for quick little cleanups, I know it's gonna sanitize, everything's gonna be great. However, when it comes to a deep clean, like if I really wanna get in and clean out my sinks, right? I've been cooking all day, I've got some grease like buildup um, in my kitchen sink. I'll use um, like a powdered, like the Comet, remember Comet from like the 70s? Yeah, still use it. Um, that or uh, Barkeeper's Friend, any kind of- Oh yes, yes, Barkeeper's Friend's a good one. You'd be shocked at like once you kind of uh, scrub down your your uh, sink with that stuff, how much grit and grime you actually get out of your out of your sink. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's what I do for sure. Yeah, 
Anyone have any questions you want to ask in the chat? Ron, you got open availability to ask a chef <laughs> anything, any topic. So yeah. What, good. what is your favorite, um, what, what are some of your favorite quick soups that you like to make, Chef? Oh, yeah, definitely quick soups. And I've been actually making quite a bit of them um, over the last couple of weeks because, yeah, soup, man. I mean, there's good canned soups available today. I mean, it's not just the Campbell's, you know, that you got to add the can of water to, which is still fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. However, to make your own soup, simple, simple, simple. And the best and easiest one is like um, a cream soup. So I made a roasted butternut squash soup. So I went to the store. You can buy the butternut squash already peeled and chopped. You don't even have to do that, but whatever. Um, if you do know how to like uh, break down a butternut or any kind of squash, great. So I got my squash, tossed it in olive oil, salt and pepper, into the oven it went, got it nice and round, all soft. Took that, popped it into a blender uh, with vegetable stock and whizzed it. Oh, and you can also throw in like onions and garlic and thyme and all sorts of stuff, right? To really boost up that flavor. And then literally just pureed it, finished it with a little bit of cream, roasted butternut squash soup. Again, restaurant flavor, restaurant quality, easy breezy. Like I was watching Jeopardy and making that. <laughs> Um, we had someone request that you give us the um, sauce proportions again, the vinaigrette. Oh, sure. For the vinaigrette, for any vinaigrette, uh, it's, it's always the same. It's one part acid, or so in this case, one part uh, lemon juice and three parts oil. Okay. So one part lemon juice, you get, it's one tablespoon of lemon juice, three tablespoons of oil. Now you can play around with that. Um, I kind of like it a little bit more zesty. So I might add a little bit more lemon. Um, than oil. But start off with that and then kind of make it how you want. And you should always taste while you're doing, right? Oh, definitely. Yes. As I always tell the students, when they bring up a plate, they'll be like, here you go, chef. And I'm like, yeah, okay, so did you try this? No. I'm like, why would you bring this if you didn't try? What if you were using sugar to make, to season everything? It's when happened. It salt, right? So, and also you want to make sure that everything's not salty, but well seasoned. There's a difference. Absolutely. So are there any other seafoods that can be used um, with this technique? Right. So any of the seafoods um, you can swap out. So as I said, like salmon will work, Chilean sea bass, red snapper, any of them, definitely. And if you get into like the, the white soles, do you know what I mean? Like the really thin fillets, going back to that idea of the flour, because they cook so quickly, um, it's a good idea to run those through flour because it will help with the browning. Um, these scallops are pretty thick, right? So I knew I had time to develop the color that I was looking for. But if you get a really thin piece of fish, you might want to run that through a little bit of flour. To help oh, that, that's really a great tip. I didn't know that. So, mm -hmm. cool. okay. So, um, yeah. Let's see. What other questions could we ask you today? So, what are you making yourself for dinner this evening? Or are you having your scallops then? Well, we're gonna have, so my cast and crew here, <laughs> Mallory, we're gonna have the scallops for lunch. So that's a nice lunch. And then later, um, I think this is horrible to admit, but <laughs> uh, we're gonna order out. Uh, so supporting like the pickup, there's a great um, restaurant up here in Lincoln Square called Monty's. And the guys from Philadelphia, they're the best cheesesteak hoagies. <laughs> Ever. I mean, you, I crave these things. So I actually woke up this morning and checked to make sure that they were open and that we could get it delivered. So nice lunch and then uh, cheesesteak hoagies for dinner. No, and I love that you're like supporting the hospitality industry by ordering in. So. I know. <laughs> Why not? You know, I feel horrible about what's going on, you know, with this industry and everything closing down. Whew. I know. I had, I myself, we ordered super dogs the other night because that's a family favorite. And I actually delivered some down to my mom in Lincoln Park who they don't deliver to. So um, right. it's very important to get all of your favorite places. If they're actually up and open, please, we encourage you to order, order in, order in from some of the great restaurants in Chicago, really help out the yeah. hospitality industry at this time. Um, it's doing a part for helping all of our, our students who are already working there. So definitely. Um, yeah. How do you take your cheesesteak? So I go, right, with the meat. I get the, um, the, the white or the white American. So I keep it pretty simple. 
sometimes I do go a little crazy because you can get it different ways. Um, and they'll put like lettuce, tomato, mayo, like all that kind of stuff. But I, I kind of just like the meat and the cheese. I mean, honestly, if you've never been up there, hit it up. It's great. It's a, awesome. Like the guy gets them. Um, he brings all of his hoagies, the, the actual rolls in from Philadelphia. Oh, wow. I think it's like the most authentic cheesesteak you can get outside of um, Philadelphia. So, wow. Yeah. All right. Good. I think I need to try. What do you know what brand those rolls are? I have someone I from that area asking. So, yeah, no, it's, it's whatever the most popular one is. Off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it's a big thing. Like, they make sure that everybody knows that that's the good bread. Is it you know? Philly Amoroso rolls? I'm not sure. Do you want to do pull it up on your phone? Oh, we have other people already looking up this fact for us. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the roll? I mean, you know, it's like here in Chicago, you know, we want the, you know, the ganola. But I know. The that's the that's Italian beef, though. It's not the same as a cheesesteak. It's totally no, different. I know. But what I'm saying is that Italian beef has to be on that roll. Do it's not the same. So, yeah, that's what they do. All right. Well, I think we might um, conclude for today. But this was a great first um, first taste talk. So thank you everyone who yeah. joined us. I would also like to share with everyone if you think later, oh my goodness, I totally have that opportunity to ask Chef a question and I didn't, or I have a really more serious question that might be a little bit lengthier than we could really handle on this Zoom call right now. I want to encourage you to reach out to, now please tell me, is, oh, we can't even see my little sign I made. Um, well, so I'll just go and do the, um, I'll share my screen and I think I have it right here for everybody. I'm gonna share my screen with you folks. And, have any other questions, please feel free and reach out at taste at nl.edu. Any questions at all? And it doesn't have to be just culinary. Remember, we're culinary and hospitality school. Want to know how to make your favorite cocktail at home? Or you don't have all the proper ingredients or something? Let's see if we can help you out with that. Want to know how to set a table best or how to fold your napkin so that you can have a fancy dinner one evening? Please feel free and reach out. We would like to um, help everyone uh, grow their education in the culinary and hospitality field. Even during this time, even though we can't have people in our kitchens and our classrooms, we can make it happen this way. So I wanna again, uh, thank all of you who joined us today. Um, I really appreciate you um, taking the time out of your day at lunchtime to do this little um, first experiment with us and we hope to have more in the future and hopefully we'll see you there as well. All right. Thanks, Christine. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, folks. Have Bye. a great day.